Hello, welcome to the fourth part of this coding challenge. Now, this fourth part of the coding challenge is just gonna start in a sort of middle place, and it's actually a, a fourth part that I recorded last week where I add sound. The reason why I'm here at the beginning of this video just to let you know about this is because um, I made some improvements in the third part of the coding challenge where I uh, increased the peg size and uh, and fix some of the uh, physics setting. So um, if, you, if you're curious about that, you can go, and you haven't watched the third part, go back and watch the third part. Otherwise, stay here, watch the fourth part where I add sound, and then uh, check the code on GitHub, make your own version of this. The code on GitHub will have all of the pieces from all the parts uh, combined together. So thanks, enjoy watching me add sound, which will actually be some dinging, which will be very annoying. So if you don't like loud, a lot of dinging, please go, go find some other video of some cute kittens snuggling or something on YouTube. There's lots of those. They have many more views than me, which is fine. There's no competition with the cute kittens. I think I'm off topic. Enjoy the coding challenge. Goodbye. So now what I have in the, um, the directory here, uh, I did this during when I took a little break. If I go to the Plinko example, I have an MP3 file ding called ding, <laughs> which makes a little ding. I have a feeling this is going to be somewhat annoying that it's going to make a ding sound, but let's let's give it a try anyway and see what happens. I think it would be much more exciting to have them be musical notes and maybe in, in a certain key or something and it plays a little song. I hope you create that. So um, you can use sound synthesis. So I am just going to add a function preload which is a, an easy way to load some media assets before the sketch starts without a callback, although I certainly could use a callback. And I'm gonna make a variable called ding. I'm gonna say ding equals load sound uh, ding.mp3. Now one thing I need to make sure is in index.html, I don't see, oh, I do have a reference to p5.sound.js. So you need to also load the sound library. And now what I'm going to do is uh, go back to here and I just wanna play the sound. So what I want to do is I'm just going to add function uh, mouse pressed uh, and I'm just going to say ding.play. So let's just see what this does. Oh, I, I read. So that's basically all I need. Is that really loud? <laughs> I hope that's okay. Um, I, I think I have the volume kind of turned down as it goes in. Um, so now here's the thing. I thought, oh, this will be an easy problem. All I have to do is play the sound every time a particle hits a plinko or a peg. I'm going to have to look at the matter.js documentation because the problem is I'm not in control of the physics. Remember, I just set up the world and said, put these things in, it, in these locations and let it go. <sighs> About to sing a copyrighted song, which I stopped myself to do. Okay. <clears throat> You really don't want me to. Um, so um, how do I know if I'm not in control of the physics engine when a particle hits a peg? You know, I could start to look at their distance against each other, but that's, then I'm like, I, the whole point of this, I'm not, um, so, mo so I'm not the one, I'm, I don't want to do that because then I'm rewriting the physics engine. The physics engine is doing this. So most physics engines come with some type of event listener, a way that I can get a callback function that's triggered whenever two bodies collide. So I actually have no idea how to do this because I haven't tried to do this yet with matter.js. I've done it with box2d and other physics engines. So let me come over here and I guess we're just going to have to start looking in the matter.js documentation. Um, so I'm going to look in uh, documentation. What am I looking for? Events. That sounds right. Events off. Events on. A callback function to a given event. So this might be right. Trigger. No, event on. I have a feeling that's it. Subscribe. Now, what are my possible event names? And what is the object? Hmm, hmm. I need some more information here, matter.js documentation. So let me think about this. Maybe there's an example. Uh, is there an example? Uh, matter.js example uh, collision event. Uh, so this looks like exactly what I want to do. I want to know when a, co a, when a collision has started and I want to know which things have collided. So let's grab this code and put it in right here. <laughs> so, and okay, so matters dot event. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep with our way of doing things and I'm gonna say events equals matter dot events just to keep that in my list of aliases. And I'm gonna say events on, and I, should, I need to do this in setup. 
So as, after I've made the engine, I can create, I want to assign a collision start event and I'm going to take this out here and say collision. So I'm going to, I think it'll be a little easier to read here if I have my own function called a collision that receives an argument called event. So the idea here, and I apologize for this not being, let me see if I can move this over a little bit. So the idea here is that I'm going to say I want to assign a collision start event with this particular engine to this function called collision. And then this function collision will automatically receive an argument called event, which is going to have information about what's collided. So I'm just going to say console.log event. I just want to see what those events look like. So let's see if this works. Ah, okay, okay, stop, stop, there's too many, there's too many of you. I just want to look at one. So what I see is collision start a pair. The pair has ooh, an object, it has a body A and a body B. I have a feeling that these are the two things that have collided, body A and body B. So that's good, I need that. There's probably other, there's information about the collision, there's all sorts of pair, there's all sorts of stuff in there. But I think it's enough for me to look at the event pairs index zero why could there be multiple, I guess there could be multiple pairs in the same time um, that, that come into one event, but I'm going to, um, so I want to look at the pairs, our event pairs. And then the um, collision is the, I, I'm going to do a loop, I'll do a loop, that's fine. There could be multiple pairs. So this is an array. Probably unnecessary, it looks like there's just one pair each time. But I'm going to say body A equals pairs index I, body A, and body B equals pairs index I, body B. Now bodies can have labels and names and IDs, which could allow you to, uh, and I think I'm going to need to do this actually, I'm going to need to assign them a label. Um, so uh, let's just look at this for a second. So let's look at what I'm getting, and let's just look at console.log body A and body B. Oh, maybe I need to do, look at those separately. Let's just look at one of them. Let's just look at body A. <laughs> so here we go. Refresh. Wait, hold on. Why is that stupid X thing there? Okay, refresh. So okay, now I'm getting, I'm getting a body. Oh look, it even says circle body. It has a label and it has an ID. So d this one has a label, it has a different ID. So this is good. So the thing that I want to know though is all these things can collide with each other. I want to know only when a particle has collided with a Plinko. I mean, I might want to know when particles collide with each other or particles collide with the, the ground body or the wall, these bucket things. But just for right now, I want to know when. So, so uh, the way that I'm going to do this is there's probably a mechanism in matter.js that might handle this for me. But here's the thing. This is my thing, particle. My particle has a body in it. And what I want to do is I'm going to say this dot body dot, uh, I'm going to, this is what box2d does actually. Box2d allows you to sign user data. So I'm just going to kind of, I don't, I'm trying to think of what's the best way, you know, I'm actually I'm just saying dot particle. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm going to say type. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say type equals, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use a string. So I'm adding my own property to the matter.js body called type, and I could use the label, maybe I should just use its label. I'm going to overwrite its label. How about that? And I'll call it particle. Because I'm not using the label for anything else. I don't think internally particle.js is using the label. So I need to give particle a label, and then in the Plinko thing, I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a label as Plinko. So now what I want to do is in that listener, right, where I have this collision, I want a console log body.a.label. Let's look at this. Particle, 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 plinko, particle, particle. So let me look at body.a label and body.b label. So now we're seeing particle and a plinko, particle and a plinko, particle and a plinko, plinko and a particle, plinko and a particle, plinko and a particle, particle and a rectangle body, right? That's the bottom. So I only want to play the sound if it's a particle and a plinko. So what I can say now is if body A is a particle and 
body B. Oh, label. So hold on. Uh, let's just call label A equals body A's label. And label B is body B's label. <laughs> Got this whole extra collision listening thing in this video tutorial all of a sudden. So now I'm going to say if label A is a particle and label B is a Plinko, uh, what, is, what was it called? Ding.play. And then uh, this is a very silly way that I'm going to write this because there's all sorts of nicer ways I can write this. But also, you know, if the first one was a Plinko and the second one was a particle, also play the sound. <laughs> so let's give this a try and see what happens. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, okay, stop, stop. <laughs> Please, nobody ever run this program again. You get the idea though. So I encourage you to think, be more thoughtful about this. Let's comment this out right now. <laughs> Let's comment that out to think about how could you, you know, have a different label or a different type for each row? How could you have a bunch of different sound? Did that really hurt everybody's ears? I'm so sorry. Um, I, there needs to be a warning. Um, is that going to be, like, do I need to do that again? So hopefully this isn't ruining everybody's ears. But I'm actually done with this. This is Plinko. I'm going to let it run uh, for a little while. Uh, thank you for watching. This was, uh, I could have recorded my uh, train whistle thing. Um, so this is the Plinko coding challenge in Matter.js. I hope that you make a better version of this. Maybe you think of create. I mean, you, uh, 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 you think about the visual design of it, you think about the sound aspect of it, you think about why you're using it in the first place. Um, perhaps you can use it as a part of a game or something else or a poetry generator. Um, I'm sure there are like lots of inaccuracies in terms of like an actual perfect Plinko board that creates a nice normalized distribution. You should see a nice bell curve. So maybe you can make a variation of it where you really see that bell curve uh, perfectly. Um, so share those with me. Um, share, share the versions you make and uh, I'll see you in another coding challenge someday. Thanks for watching.